you all here this morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And what a great time of worship this morning. I thank God. Um, we talked about worship in Sunday school, and we talked about this part of worship, right? But we worship with, with our heart, but we also worship with our mind. We connect to Jesus Christ. We connect to the Lord through his word. And so we've had that really kind of that heart experience uh, right now as we have sung to the Lord, and we're getting ready to now get into the word. Before we do that, a few quick announcements this morning. Uh, Sunday school at 9.30, if you are local and you're not here, and uh, you're, I really would love to see you all here because I think our study on the spiritual disciplines is really uh, it's really just going well, I believe, and we're in the discipline of worship right now. We'll finish that up probably next week. Also on Wednesday, Wednesday evening at 6 o'clock, we have uh, our time of prayer. Uh, here in the sanctuary from 6 to 7, followed by a time of study of God's Word. We're going through the Gospel of Mark. And so uh, that's at 7 o'clock in the Fellowship Hall. Um, neighborhood Care, they met this past week. I think we've got some pictures uh, of the, uh, the um, outreach. So there they go. Uh, they were the police department, the local school that we've adopted, and of course the fire station. So uh, we do that every month. The next one's coming up on November 21st. I want to thank those of you that have helped uh, support, uh, continue to help us with support through our, uh, the month of October with our insurance and all of that that's come due. We greatly appreciate your generosity. Um, if you um, choose to give online, you can do so through our church website. You can visit us at ncagbb.org. There's a tab there to go ahead and donate online. If you're local and you want to donate, we have a basket up front here for that as well. And of course, this, today's sermon will be online later today. Um, you can share that with someone or go back and listen to it. That's at our, on our Listen tab on our website, at our church it's our website. So this morning, I want to share from you from, of all places, Deuteronomy. Okay? I was... Um, just kind of going through and doing some reading. and I've been reading on praise. And uh, it's interesting that I've kind of been reading on that right now, on praise, with, especially with November coming up, praise and thanksgiving and things like that. Uh, we are always thankful. But this morning I want to go ahead and read from Deuteronomy um, chapter 8. And I've entitled this morning's message, A Praise of Remembrance. It's Deuteronomy 8, verses 10 through 18. If you would stand with me this morning as we read God's word. And it says, and you shall come, and you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Take care, lest you forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments and his rules and his statutes, which I commanded you today. Lest when you eat, when you have eaten, you are full and have built good houses and live in them. But when your herds and flocks multiply and your silver and gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied. Then your heart be lifted up, and you forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrifying wilderness, and its fiery serpents and scorpions, and thirsty ground where there was no water, who brought you water out of the flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna that your fathers did not know, that, that he might humble you and test you, to do you good in the end. Beware lest you say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand has, have got me this wealth. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your fathers as it is this day. Father, we thank you for this word. I pray that we go forth in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, that you would speak to us today, Lord, through this word. And that, Lord, your will would be done in our hearts and our lives if we've entered into, Lord, a time of worship and we worshiped you and we felt the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, Lord, in this place and in our lives. I know, Lord, that that is only the beginning of what you want to start today. And so in Jesus' name I pray, continue and bring to completion in this house this morning what you have begun. That, Lord, we would be renewed and revived in you. And that, Lord, we would just be thankful we can lift praise up to you and let us lift up this praise and remembrance for who you are and for what you have done in each and every one of our lives. We give you 
praise and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I've got a definition here that I'm going to put up on the screen from the Lexham Theological Word Book. And it's a definition for uh, praise uh, and thanksgiving, really. Praising, thanksgiving is praising God. Praising God is the activity of God's creatures and honoring God because of the acts and nature of God. Thanksgiving is an expression of gratitude to God for his care and concern, especially as shown through his redemptive acts. And over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be looking at praise and thanksgiving. I'm going to look at these things. I want us to kind of consider this as we move into November. And of course, in November, we celebrate Thanksgiving, right? And so um, it's a time to be thankful and a time to eat turkey, watch football, take naps, all those wonderful things that are a part of the Thanksgiving life, aren't they? But praise and thanksgiving are an important part of the believer's relationship with their Heavenly Father. And the, our praise and our thanksgiving are bound in Jesus Christ. And so when we talk about praise, when we talk about thanksgiving, when we talk about praising God, it's important to uh, our relationship with him that we realize that in praising him, things can sometimes be overlooked. You know, as, as I was thinking about this, that I was thinking about praise, and praise doesn't necessarily always come easy. You're, we go through situations in life. We go through certain things, and we have to, we, we maybe ask the question, where is God in this? Where is God in my life? What's God doing? And questions like that are not really questions of praise, are they? They're not, they're, they're questions that kind of get us to wonder why and where. And this is what the children of Israel have been dealing with, uh, I believe, over the, their, their wilderness wandering. And yet, during that time, during that 40 years, God remained faithful. He continued to care for them and feed them and things like that. I always thought it was interesting that in that, that whole period of time, their sandals never wore out. Their feet never swelled up, okay? Anybody who's walked a lot or stood on their feet for a long time knows that's almost a physical impossibility. And yet God did all of these things, and he sustained them, and he brought them through out of Egypt into the, into the wilderness, 40 years in the wilderness, and now they're getting ready to enter into the promised land. They're getting ready to go into that area, that place that God had promised uh, Abraham so long ago. Now he's going to fulfill that covenant that he had made. So we think about that. We think about the fact that when things are going bad and God is helps us through that, that we want to praise him. We praise the Lord. Thank you, God, for getting me through this situation. Thank you, God, for this taking care of this need, or whether it's financial or physical or relational, whatever. Thank you, God, for your blessings. But then, blessings come. We find ourselves in situations, and this is the warning, really, that Moses is giving the people. You're going to leave the wilderness, and you're going to go to a land of prosperity. A land flowing with milk and honey. A land that God has promised you. You're going to leave here and go there, and things are going to go well. And that really is kind of the question we have to ask ourselves. But what about when things are going Okay? What about those times when we we're living in blessings? What about the time we're living in abundance? And you know, blessing and abundance does not necessarily mean that we're financially independent and wealthy. Okay? Blessings and abundance are those things that God gives us that He brings into our lives that show that, that you know, that, um, that are better than the wilderness. We're out of the wilderness now, we're into that, that land of milk and honey, so to speak. But what happens then when we enter into that? What happens to our praise? What happens to our thanksgiving? How do things change? You see, in Deuteronomy, Moses writes to warn the people of what can happen during times of prosperity. And as I was preparing this message this week, I had had a conversation with a pastor friend and we were talking about just kind of the way things are right now in, in the church and the Christian faith in our country and all this. And, you know, while we may struggle with things like, you know, increased prices and things like that, compared to some parts of the world, this is, we are a very prosperous nation and a very prosperous people. And in our prosperity, I think we have lost the ability to worship God. This is Moses' warning to the people. And I think it's one that can apply to each and every one of us if we're not careful. And I believe as a whole can apply to 
the church? It can. So what happens during that time? What God's servant uh, shares with the people uh, preparing them to enter the promised land can serve as a warning to us of what can happen when prosperity and success take our eyes off the one who supplies all our needs. And that's what I want to share with you this morning. And so I'm going to be looking back at some of the verses. And I, I put the verses so that as they go through, they should be able to see them after each point. And I'm going to talk about three things. And the first thing that Moses warns them is something that's very important to us, is the fact that, you know what? We can fail to keep God's commands. Check, verse 11 says, Take care lest you forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments and his rules and his statutes, which I command you today. So Moses warns the people, when you enter into that land, be very careful because... There's a tendency, especially when things get better, to forget God's statutes, to forget his commandments. Because we become, and I'll use this term several times throughout this, but we become self-sufficient. I might even say here we become self-absorbed. It's all about what we think. And you know, we do live in a very, it's all about me, it's about whatever situation uh, or world. You see, Moses warned the people not to forget the Lord by disobeying his commandments. And so what Moses is saying here is very true for each and every one of us as well. Uh, that it's natural to look to God when we're in the desert, isn't it? When we find things in life difficult, we find ourselves struggling with things, especially as Christians, we find ourselves in a position where the only hope we have is Jesus Christ. The only hope we have is God. We go to God, we look to God for the answer because we're struggling. Because we don't know where to find it. And we can't find it in ourselves. That's really what it boils down to. If I can't find it in me, then i got to go to another source. And that source is God. And so I, I put myself aside for the sake of him. And this is a natural thing for us to do. The chief danger that they would become pretty much, and I like this term, I found it in one of the commentaries, they would become amnesiac. They would become forgetful about their history. And, the, and, pride in, and in the pride of the present, they would forget the sacred story of their election and redemption. You see, they, were, they would be, Moses warned them that if you, were, if you stop obeying God, if you stop obeying his commandments, you will forget who he is, what he has done for you. And if we go back and read through the Old Testament, okay, we do see here that eventually God has to send them into exile to teach them a lesson. Their prosperity drew them away from God. And his commandments, idolatry, pagan worship, all of these things were taking place. Why? Because of Mo Moses warned him, this is what would happen. And it did. So it's a very glaring, uh, you know, example for us here. We can see it. If we're not careful as a church, we can find ourselves in the same situation. We, we ignore God's commandments for the sake of ourselves. We forget where God has brought us from. As Pentecostals, if we were to look at this from that perspective, we can go back to the uh, to what it was like in the early 20th century for many Pentecostals or Pentecostal churches. They were the social outcasts. They were the, for lack of a better term, they were the freaks of the church. But as time moves on, and, and we see here this, this great outpouring, this great outflowing of the Holy Spirit during that time, this great anointing in Azusa Street and other places, and just how, how the gospel and the power of God spread. We just, we just sang that, that last chorus, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. We need that again. Amen. We've become socially accepted. We have moved from the desert into the promised land. And in some cases, the statutes of God are forgotten. We must be very careful not to find ourselves acting and moving in disobedience. And I just kind of point that out. But this is true of the church as a whole. We can go back to the Reformation church. We can see the same thing when the, when the church split during the Reformation and the, and the persecution that took place. We can go back to the first century and see the persecution that took place uh, uh, amongst Christian believers and everything like that, you know, it, 
in the Roman Empire and all that, and that was all there. That was the, the wilderness wandering until all of a sudden the church became an institution and became politically accepted. There is a, history shows us that we move from one to the other in the process. The danger of losing that ability to obey the commands of God is right there. Moses brings it up, and this is true, and it's, I think it's true throughout history. I'm hard-pressed to think of any situation where it didn't occur in some form or fashion. In lean times, in times of plenty, we are commanded to follow the Lord's commands, his statutes, just as we would in times of, of, of lean times, just in times of struggle. There's no change. God is still God, whether we have a need or whether we don't. We are to obey his commands, whether we have a need or whether we don't. There is no difference. God is first. And Moses brings this point across here in verse 11 of what he says. And I think that's very important for us to realize this, to understand here. Take care lest you forget. Now, to make that statement tells me the danger of forgetting is there. So we see here that we can fail to keep his commandments because we become forgetful. The second thing we see here is we can forget our past history with the Lord. Now here we have verses 14 through 16. It says, then your hearts will be lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrifying wilderness with fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty ground, and there was no water who brought you water out of the flinty rock, who led you in the wilderness with manna that your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and test you to do good in the end. You see, Moses reminded the people of all the great things God had done. For them, it was the past. It was the wilderness. What great things has God done in our lives? What what has he done that we have forgotten? The things that, that change, the things that, you know, that, that we were going through a situation, we get out of that situation, and we didn't even realize the knowledge that God brought us through it. You see, it was for this reason, the fact that the people um, would forget, it's for this reason that the desert experience really came before the gift of, uh, of the land. If you stop and think about this, if they, had, if they had entered the land of milk and honey first, off, off that step, didn't I? Yeah, if I land face first, um, just leave me there. Anyway, uh, I'll eventually awaken. But if, if they had gone into the promised land first, they, there was no expectation of why they would want to go into the wilderness. But they wanted to be delivered from the wilderness. They didn't want to spend the next several generations there. God had a promise and that promise was the promised land. It wasn't the wilderness. As a matter of fact, it was because of the wilderness that an entire generation missed out on the promised land. But the generation that's coming in now, they grew up in the wilderness. They grew up, they started young, and they came through all of this. And Moses is reminding him of this. He's all of these great things God has done, and he's talking to a generation that had seen them since childhood. This isn't like, oh, we were, you remember the adults. Can't we just go back to Egypt? At least there we had food. Who cared if we were in slavery? We could eat. Who cared if we were beaten? We had water. But this generation, that was a distant memory for them. All they could see is the blessing of God, piled upon the blessing of God, piled upon the blessing of God for the last 40 years. They could see God at work in the lives of their lives, in the lives of their families. And now they, many of them adult, had children of their own. And these children are not even going to have to worry about experiencing the wilderness. They're going to enter into the promised land. And they would forget. They would forget their past history. They would forget the gift, the gifts that God had given them. They were going to move into another area, and, and the danger here is, is that um, is that they would do that. Um, in this, they learned to depend upon God in the wilderness. There's no dependence upon God 
there is, I'll clarify this, that, so don't think that I'm being heretical here, okay? I'm thinking from the human perspective of the mind. When things are good, I don't need God. When things are prosperous, when things are good, I forget when things were bad. I forget what he did for me in the past. But they had learned to depend upon God in the wilderness. It was a lesson they were to take with them when they entered into the promised land. It's a lesson we must keep with us. Who amongst us hasn't found ourselves in some wilderness wandering that God hasn't gotten us through and we've forgotten? And God says, don't forget, hold on to that because that's where you saw me do my greatest work. We are called to remember the times that God has brought us through our wilderness and not forget the great things he has done in our lives. You know, I, I think about this, and I, I think about so many things that, you know, that even in the last couple of years that, that God has done in my life. And I think, okay, now, especially now that I've had the, you know, the heart surgery and everything, I'm feeling so much better. I mean, you know, I, people say, well, how do you feel? And I say, the best I've felt in almost two years. You know what the danger of that is? Forgetting the two years. Forgetting what God did to sustain me for those two years. Forgetting those times when I said, okay, I can only mow half the lawn today because I feel like I'm going to conk out. Or this or that. You know? I mean, to be on vacation and sit around in the morning and chat with friends and still eat a two-hour nap, that says something about what's going on. If I forget that, I forget what God did there and only think about what's going to happen from here, I miss the blessings of two years of my life. The Israelites are going to miss the blessings of 40 years of God. What blessings have you forgotten? What blessings are you missing because now you've left that wilderness, you've left that situation and moved into where you're at now and you've forgotten what God did to get you here? Let's not forget the great things that he has done in our lives because those great things make us who we are in him. The third thing we see is we can get lost in our own pride and self-sufficiency. Verses 17 and 18, beware lest you say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand have gotten me this way. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your fathers, as it is this day. You see, Moses warned them of the danger of self-pride and giving glory to self over God. You know, we must be very careful. Um, you know, we pray that God will continue to grow our church, to multiply our church. But if we, you know... It should never get to the point where we say, look at what we've done, because we've done nothing. And this is true in our lives as well. God has given us the ability to learn, to grow, to work. None of it's possible without him. To make a living for ourselves, to build a home and a family. The people could avoid pride in their wealth and strength if they would constantly remember the lessons that they had learned in the wilderness. We need to remember that, you know, we're only here maybe, and this we've only been here for a short time, but there was a time before. There was a time when. All of life is a gift from God and nothing is possible apart from Him. That goes during the good times and the bad. The same God who supplied them with manna in the wilderness is the one who gave them the ability to work and create wealth. It's the same God who gave them the ability to, to prosper in the land that they were going to be in. I mean, read Joshua. Joshua was filled with military successes and failures. And the failures were when they chose to do it on their own. And this is true throughout Scripture. You know, we were talking, uh, you know, just the other day was in Bible study on Wednesday night. We talked about David's thoughts and how he didn't take them captive and what happened. And, and there was a progression that went from a thought to an action, to adultery, to murder. And all of this because why? Because he forgot his Lord God. He did this on his own. 
God had no part of that. But then you look at the successes of David when he focused on God. His wilderness, running from Saul, but God continued to bless him. He forgot all those blessings, I believe, in that one instance, among others. And the same is true in our lives. David had gone from the, the rebel warrior to king who could have anything he wanted. And he took it. He forgot the caves. We have to be careful. And we need to realize that God is God in both. If he is God in, your, in the world of your desert, he's God in the world of your prosperity. It doesn't change. He's the same in both. When things go well, we must remember that the blessing of our good times comes from the one who blessed our mean times. The same God. The same blessings. Pride and self-sufficiency cause us to lose ourselves in our success. And when that happens, we separate ourselves from God. This is true individually, and I believe it's true of the church as well, the body of Christ. If we're not careful and we say, look what we've done, look what we've built, look what we've been able to accomplish, then we're in danger of saying, look what I did and not look what he has done. The glory is his. And his alone. So what does all this mean? In times of prosperity and abundance, people are inclined to become satisfied with life on earth as it is. And I think that's what we have to be, be, be careful of. We, we can become so self-absorbed in, in what's going on and how good things are that we, we lose sight of the fact that there's a greater work to be done. We find our enjoyment in our material blessings. Prosperity brings temptation to forget God. There was a point in time in my life when um, I was on a missions trip to New York, uh, New York City, and um, the Lord really humbled me. We went to this church to uh, for, uh, for an outreach one of the days, and they were serving breakfast to the homeless. And I talked to the pastor the church had like dental care, physical care, like physicians, things like that. They even had valet parking for the shopping carts of the homeless so that when they could go in in confidence and get their meal, get whatever was done, get a bag of groceries, come out and know that everything, all their possessions would be there because they had people watching them for them. I went there and I was so humbled by that. I asked the pastor, I said, well, how did this happen? And he said, uh, one of the ladies, a homeless woman came up one day, a homeless lady, and she, she said, I, I need this, this is going on in my life, and I, I don't know where to turn, and I turn to you. And he realized we were ill equipped to do it. So they started doing a bunch of different things. They changed the whole dynamic of the church. They didn't have a fellowship hall, so they had to get rid of all the pews so they could feed the homeless in the sanctuary. I came back the next week her home church. And I had a lady come up to me and say, Pastor, this side of the sanctuary is too cold. And another one come up and say, this side of the sanctuary is too hot. You know how tempting it was for me not to say, why don't you switch seats? Beautiful sanctuary. Beautiful music. And I don't, I'm not knocking that. Don't get me wrong. But we can become, if we're not careful, we can become so self-absorbed in how comfortable we are in the pew that we miss the fact that there are those out there that have nothing. Enjoy your blessing. But don't forget your wilderness. That's what Moses is saying to the people here. He's not telling them to give up on their blessing. He's not telling them to go to the land of of, of, of milk and honey and, and, the, and to the promised land and to live in poverty. No. He's saying you're going to have it. It's there. But don't lose sight of where we came from. 
Don't lose sight of what God did in the past because he's going to do it again in the future for you. What you have isn't yours. It's his. The challenge for each of us is to remember that God is the source of everything. Whatever ability you have, God's given it to you. Thank you for it. I want to go back to verse 18 again, Deuteronomy 8, 18. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth, that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your fathers as it is this day. Why does God give us the ability to succeed? To confirm his promise with us. To confirm his covenant with us. That's what, that's what he's saying here. That's true for us as well. Thank God that he kept his promise. Thank God that he's a covenant keeper and what he's done in your life. So what about you this morning? You here, those of you that may still be online, what about you? Do you find yourself wandering in the wilderness seeking God's help right now? He's there for you. He will do it. Do you find yourself wandering through a time of blessing and grateful for what you have accomplished? Because you didn't. He did. Give him the glory. Give him the honor for it. In either case, remember, it is God who will carry you through who gives you the ability to succeed, who helps you in lean times and times of prosperity, because with him, all things are possible. Our remembrance of praise calls for us to do so in times of blessing, as well as in times of trial, in times of need. Same God, and it's all due him. Let's bow our heads. So this morning, if you find yourself wandering in wilderness, seeking God's help, he's here for you today, and he wants to meet you there, and he wants to bring you through, just as he brought the children of Israel through uh, the wilderness, he wants to bring you through your wilderness wandering right now. He wants to just bless you and all you, you know, just you know, give him praise, give him the glory for who he is, and trust him. If you are here this morning and you're online and you are wandering through a time of blessing and you are so excited about all that you've been able to accomplish and everything that you've been able to do and, and you, 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 I want you to know right now that you could do nothing without him. He has given you the ability. He is the God who blesses. And if that's the case, maybe you have been in a wilderness and you've forgotten what he, what he did then and what he's doing today. Give him the glory. It's all his. Let's praise the Lord. Let's thank him and let's not forget. Let's remember him for who he is and for all he's done. Father, as we close our time together today, I thank you, Lord, that you have been with us. I know you've been with me, Lord, during those times in the wilderness. And Lord, I've even done some grumbling. But I thank you that you did, you did not give up, that you carried us through, that you carried me through. And Lord, I give you the praise for what you've done. And Lord, now in, in areas of my life where I have moved from one area to the other, I pray, God, that you would help me to continue to keep my eye on you, to praise you for any success and anything that comes my way and our way, Lord, as a, as a body of believers, individually, as a church, we just commit everything to you. And we give you praise and we thank you. If there are any, Lord, that that are in either one of these areas right now that the Holy Spirit needs to minister to, the Holy Spirit needs to speak to, that in Jesus' name, may your will be done in their lives. And we give you praise and thanks, and we give you glory and honor. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. God is good. Amen.